My name is Dr. Karl Obzanski. I'm the founder of Aston Vision Sciences and we're a spin out from Aston University based in Birmingham that develops medical ophthalmic devices. My name is Paul Chapman Hatchett. I'm an optometrist by trade. Uh, I used to run a domiciliary business and I'm now working with Carl, helping supporting him trying to launch his medtech business. This year has been very exciting for us. Um, we're very proud to say that we launched our first product, which is a fluorescein filter back at 100% optical. This is a highly tuned barrier filter that fits onto many compatible slit lamps. And it's a great way for clinicians who don't currently have a rattan filter in their slit lamp to be able to upgrade to the new gold standard, the performing uh, fluorescein observation. And now we've turned our focus onto a second product, which is the Lumio, which looks like this. What this Lumio does is we've decided to take our fluorescein filter out of a traditional clinic, enable clinicians to perform uh, fluorescein eye tests in the comfort of different environments. So when you've got people who can't fit onto a traditional slit lamp for whatever reason, either their posture or their mobility doesn't allow them to do that. Or if you've got fidgety non-compliant patient like children, for example, who have difficulty in focusing and it's hard to hold them steady. The Lumio is a perfect device that allows for white and fluorescein blue um, observation to be conducted onto the patient's anterior eye. I spent my whole career seeing individuals in their own homes and somebody who's osteoporotic for instance you're going to struggle with their neck posture to get them onto a slit lamp this allows you to lean over and put the equipment where you need it to be to make your assessments and make your clinical judgments when you just need to quickly see what's going on in this patient why are they complaining about various symptoms such as um, itchiness redness you know this all sounds like dry eye put a bit of fluorescein in the eye turn on the lumio and you can quickly see um, what might be going on. With the, the ability to have white light is also to look at um, any any other uh, aspects of the of the eye. So for instance, in growing eyelashes. And um, I mean, one of the things that we did regularly uh, in clinics was, um, was epilation of eyelashes for patients who couldn't get into the hospital anymore. And this piece of equipment with the white light will allow you to, to do that much more effectively than any other bits of equipment that I'd ever used. So this is the Lumio device. Um, it has two slider buttons very simply. So you can switch on a white light with different intensities and you have the blue light for your fluorescein. So depending on white, what light source you use, you can do the different tests. For white light, you'd be looking for perhaps anything on the anterior surface, um, blepharitis, you can do your eyelid epilation. And then simply, you would take your fluorescein filter and that clips onto the front. And now you have your fluorescein filter, which you can then use with your blue light. You would instill the eye and hold it up to the patient face. You'd position it on the brow like so. So you lean your three fingers against the patient brow and you look through, you have a 7x magnification there. One of the things we wanted to do is make the design symmetrical. So you can then use this with your left hand when you're looking at the opposite eye of the patient. One of the things that I find when we're doing domiciliary work is that obviously our patients can often be through no fault of their own, slightly non-compliant, either because of a physical disability or a mental disability. And so what we want is a piece of equipment that's flexible, that's easy to, to manipulate and put into position. One of the beauties of the fluorescein yellow filter barrier is that obviously the image is significantly enhanced. So what that does is it gives us as clinicians much more confidence in talking about, for instance, dry eye. And now we're giving clinicians the opportunity to really diagnose that more effectively with the barrier filter on there. That then in turn gives them the confidence to say to their customers, to their patients, you, know, you have dry eye. I can see it very clearly. Rechargeable is something that we did look at, but the circuitry to make the rechargeable function works significantly adds to the size of the device. If you've got a bigger device, it's harder for you to get closer to the patient. We just want to make it so easy so that if the battery runs out, you just buy a you know, three pound coin cell battery that you can get anywhere. This battery is not going to die on you. It just gets fainter and fainter, but we have probably hundreds of hours of usage before the battery needs to be replaced. The weight is also a really critical feature on this. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're seeing the patient, although you probably got several fingers touching the patient's forehead, actually the, the weight is critical because you want to be able to hold it as steady as possible. One of the things that we worked hard on was to make sure that as, as you saw when Carl picked it up, you're holding it with your finger and your thumb 
And that's a really nice, solid, rigid position. We try to make it as, as light and as, and as easy to hold as possible. We're at the um, final stretch with the Lumio, so that's going to be available for market in the next few weeks. So probably early October now. And then we actually have our star product that we've been working on for the last few years, which is really going to blow the socks off. So this product will be um, a portable eye examiner. Um, so it will have functionality that allows for uh, digital imaging of the front, middle and back of the eye. And it can be used um, by end users, clinicians in a variety of settings. So in your traditional hospital setting or um, in a, a care home or a domiciliary environment, or even it's going to be able to be used in rural environments in developing countries where healthcare is actually not even available today. And so the device will have multifunctionality. Um, it will be able to com combine several large devices into a single handheld solution. And uh, we really think it's going to be like a wow device. So we're excited. Uh, we're just finishing off with the development on that one and we're just starting the regulation. You know, again, we have to go the electrical safety. We have to make sure the lights are um, not going to cause any damage. Um, and that's coming next year. So watch this space.